I was asked if I would talk about how I created this text effect on uh, the sheriff's office. And so I'm going to talk to you about that. It's basically done in the shading editor. And I'm going to maximize this for now so that you can see it. And if you want to take a screenshot, some of this might be a little small. Let me see if I can, if I can move this all into one sort of area. Uh, close enough anyhow. The main things are, there are two images here. One that I created and one that I didn't. The one that I created is this sheriff.png. I created the text in another program. So let's just come back here. Okay, this text. I downloaded a Western font in this case, and I created the text in a graphics program, and I saved it as a PNG. It's white text on a black background. Now, I also made it 1024 by 1024, and I made the text as big as I could in there, and when I brought the text in, and I should show you this, I can bring another one in, I was able to crop some of that space off of anything that wasn't part of the text. But at any rate, you bring in your PNG with your text. All right, so next thing I have is I've got a color ramp here that the color from the text goes into the fact. And I've got this set up as, I believe that's just black and that's just white, just to, for some extra control if I need it. I'll show you this in a second. I've plugged that into the base color. I also wanted to add a grunge effect so that the text wasn't just a solid white sort of pristine looking thing. I wanted to make it look like it was faded away a bit or broken up a bit. And so I downloaded some grunge textures. These are black and white images uh, with some transparency. So, so you should experiment with various grunge textures and see what works well for you so just download a bunch of these black and white ones and and see and if i open this you'll see i've got a bunch of them and let's see if i can find the one that i used which one did i use actually i'm not actually quite sure but you could certainly try a bunch of these some of these are jpegs some of them are pngs and you could try both although i usually have better effects with uh i think it's this one here yeah it's this one here grunge overlay one it's probably from textures.com all right so here's how i connected it forgetting about this part for the moment i connect this into a color ramp and i'm going to come back here so that you can see the text a little bit as i play around with this i've got this color ramp set with the white almost in the middle I'll, I'll drag this around and you'll see see the way it sort of fades a little bit and i've got this as light gray i'll move that around a bit and see if that does anything you can see that effect there um if i change this and i make it darker let's just look at it does it okay see it's white and the, the, all the text comes in so i just sort of dropped it down so something like that let's go back up we'll talk about the connection in a minute let's go back up here and see if, if this makes any appreciable change i'm just going to drag the black in it's getting a bit sharper in my opinion uh, let's drag the white this way actually maybe not all that evident of course if i was to change this color up you could probably get away without that at all let's do that and plug it let's just leave that off for now uh, you know because really i think in order to affect it you'd have to change the color make it more gray or this one darker or this one lighter in order to do a similar thing with the grunge okay so how do i have these connected i've come out of the alpha in both cases, so of my original image with the text, and I've come down into the bottom socket of a, of a multiply. This was a, um, a mix RGB, so into the bottom color socket. And this alpha from the grunge, I went into the fact of the color ramp, which we just looked at, and I took the color out of that into the first color slot. I switched this to multiply and I dragged the fact you can see what's going on there all the way to one multiply and that goes into the alpha of the principal bstf at that point i can then do this stuff that we just looked at and play around with this until i get an effect that i i like i can bring it in and get it sort of sharper almost like it's chipped away or do that and it sort of spreads out a little bit all right so the next thing I did is I added this stuff here. So I'm just going to delete that with the Node Wrangler enabled in your preferences. So if I just click on this and go Control T, 
we'll bring in a mapping and a texture coordinate node. By default, it'll go to UV. I'm going to switch this to object. So it's just based on the object. You don't have to unwrap or anything. And with this, I can play around with the scale and various parameters of my texture. So let's say I want to move it. I'm just going to pull on the Y. And you can see the grunge texture is moving. So you could adjust it a little bit that way. Let me do this. And you can also scale it. All right, just to get, you know, whatever effect it is that you are looking for on your text. All right, and then just play around with these until you get something that you that you like. All right, so that is how I did that effect. It's very straightforward. This is the node tree, and you make your own image here or practice with another PNG that you brought in and, and see how it works with various grunges and various positions on the color ramp. All right, so if you need to, take a screenshot of that or copy it down. Give it a try. Hope you get some good results for that. I mean, normally I would do this in Substance Painter, but this is one way you could quickly do something like that in Blender because the last thing you want is, you know, a sort of rundown looking building or object or whatever, and then pristine text. That just does not look good. All right. See you next time. Take care.